Coming up on South Coast Spotlight, blast to the past for repeal day. Come play on the new playground at the Boys and Girls Club and experience the wide open streets. All that and more right now on South Coast Spotlight. Welcome to South Coast Spotlight, where we take you into a world of art and culture and explore the best that our community has to offer. I'm Stephanie Taylor. Put down that remote because we're about to hit rewind into the Roaring Twenties for an extraordinary celebration of the end of Prohibition. It all takes place right here in downtown Santa Barbara. Prohibition was a time during American history when alcohol was illegal to consume. Cut to 81 years later, some believe December 5th, the day that Prohibition was repealed in 1933, is one to celebrate. Who doesn't like the end of Prohibition? <laughs> the experience of the event will take you all the way back to the Roaring Twenties. You can expect lots of fun people dressed up in great outfits and amazing cocktails. All seven of the bars participating this year have unique cocktails that they organize just for this event. Um, and everyone who's coming out is, is dressed up in cool outfits. The event will take you to a number of bars in the downtown area, like the featured Wildcat Lounge. So we've made it more about turning up at various locations, and you can stay here, you can go to other places, you can join us and go to two or three, but these seven locations plus this one store are just gathering places for anyone who's interested in the celebrating December 5th and just having a nice drink. Prohibition began on January 16, 1920, outlawing the manufacture or sale of intoxication liquors. Despite its illegality, many Americans continued to drink alcohol. As we know, it led to lots of crime and, and all the famous gangsters of that time. It's, it just shows that you can't legislate people's behavior. So we had 13 years of it. People still drank, of course. You know, we had the good sense to, you know, take one uh, constitutional amendment, the 18th, which outlawed alcohol, and then replace it with another amendment which uh, outlawed the 18th amendment. It took 13 years of illegal activity to correct the ban of alcohol. Now, repeal day is one that is remembered in history. The Prohibition era was a lawless era, and it was really problematic in a lot of different ways, and we overcame it. Right, it was a problem at the core of what defines the American nation, and we fixed it. And to me, that's heartwarming because I think there are a lot of things broken about our world and our country right now. So this gives me some hope that even as screwed up as it is, maybe we can still fix it. It turns out our beautiful coastal town was not so innocent during the dry years of Prohibition. Due to Santa Barbara's long coastline and various inlets, it was a popular place for rum runners and bootlegging. Santa Barbara was actually one of the hottest import destination for rum runners. Thanks in part to the islands, was a great and easy way for guys to come in and drop the boats right on the beaches, and then they'd take them to cars and take them down to Los Angeles. Even the Santa Barbara Cemetery and restaurants in the area would take part in the illegal activity. There was one uh, kind of a, a tomb area uh, where they would hang an oil lamp, and if the oil lamp was on, it meant it was safe. The coast was clear and you could bring your bottles ashore and load them into a truck and head down south or wherever you're gonna go. There were also speakeasies here, but because they weren't advertised, we don't know where they are or where they were exactly, but um, we hear that maybe the basement around Blush was one, maybe, perhaps and some other places. The founders of the Repeal Day event, Ted Mills and Joe Andrew, believe that December 5th should be a national holiday. It's a holiday between very stressful holidays. We have two very stressful holidays where you have to travel, buy presents, be with family members that you may not want to. This is a very easy holiday. Just have a drink and remember American history. So make sure to mark your calendars for December 5th and enjoy your drinks legally. For more information on this fun event, you can check out repealdaysb.com. This has been Bailey Miller reporting for TVSB. A safe and positive place for children to learn and play during the times when they're not in school is imperative. 
In this next segment, the glow of our spotlight shines on the Boys and Girls Club, where the dream of a new playground has recently become a reality. Well, this is the moment that we've all been waiting for, especially the children here at Carpinteria Boys and Girls Club. The construction of their brand new playground is finally finished and TVSB is here for the reveal. Let's take a look. After a year of fundraising, the Boys and Girls Club of Carpinteria has a playground to be proud of. With over 50,000 alumni since 1952, and as an organization that prides itself in enabling all youth to reach their full potential, the new playground is an example of how the support of the community comes with ease. This has been um, a long time coming. We had to remove our play structure a little over a year ago. Um, because it was becoming a safety hazard, it was wooden. So since then, our kids haven't had really a release back here. Our licensed childcare is separate from the rest of our club, so they really only have this backspace to play. Once we got the initial funding, it um, kind of took a little bit longer to get the rest of the funding. So it's just so exciting that after a year and a half of waiting, we have something and the kids are so excited. When they finally got to see the playground, working here, it's like a proud mama moment. They were just so excited and so happy. So I took some of the older kids who were on our drop-in side and brought them over here. And the first thing that they said was, it's not broken. <laughs> we had a playground that was back here and you know it was great for the kids to get that outside play, um, but it was old and it was time for something new. Playground itself gives the children an opportunity to actually get outside the other one we had before was actually quite worn out, so it was due for a new change makeover. And it gives the children a lot of opportunity to play outside. More activities, uh, I think, is better for everybody, especially them. Burns off a lot of energy. It keeps them well-rounded and it helps our teachers out because our kids need to get their wiggles out. They need to run and play. The club has chosen a few select kids to be the first to play on the structure as a reward for good behavior. We've kind of had it like roped off so the kids couldn't touch it because we really wanted to pick the kids, you know, that have proven their behavior level is awesome or they've had a change. We've seen an attitude difference or, you know, they're really participating in certain programs. So we want to reward them. And those were the kids that you got to see today, Lily and Mauricio. We wanted to reward Lily because we see a total change um, from last year to this year. And we wanted to reward Mauricio for just kind of falling in place. Like he made all the friends and you know, he does any type of program we have, he's signing up for it. Even if they're conflicting, <laughs> like they're at the same time, he's gonna be at both. <laughs> we focus on many things. We focus on character. We focus on education. We focus on future career even. Our mission statements talks about giving the opportunity to kids, all kids, especially those who are in need, to have a safe place to play and study and learn and share and grow up. So the playground is just a part of that big picture of providing that kind of environment. We got a generous donation through the um, Thompson Foundation. We got about half of it and then it was up to us to raise the other half. So that came through our annual auction, that's every May. So we got that through our bids for kids. And then our um, local foundation, the Carpentry Boys and Girls Club Foundation also kicked in to help us get it finalized. We asked and we didn't really have to beg um, for the money to get that done. The community knew that it's something that we needed and it's something that our kids deserved. So they really backed us and they were really you know, nice enough to yeah, of course we'll help you, of course we'll give you the money. With the playground specifically, we're really hoping that it'll kind of help our children, teach them interactive skills and, um, you know, dramatic plays just so important to kids nowadays. And with recesses being cut from school and physical education programs, you know, that's something that we're able to offer in an after school program. Um, so our hope is that, you know, now that we have a playground here, that we can invite more community members in and their kids and, and have them really utilize our facilities. Boys and girls clubs are life changers. They really are. 
There are many places where you can work, but there are few places that you can work where you know that what you do on a daily basis is going to impact a child really for the rest of their life in a positive way. And that's what makes this such a wonderful place to be for me, but also such a wonderful place for the community around us because they know that there is a safe, wonderful place where their kids can go and actually learn the things they're going to need in life to be amazing adults. Carpinteria Boys and Girls Club has been an icon in Carpinteria for a long time. And for us to support this actually supports our future generations. And that is one thing that I see a huge benefit, um, that this has a huge niche within the community in developing our next generation of leaders, leaders in the community. And that's why I enjoy it. Thank you everybody for the support and, and it's so exciting. The kids are ecstatic to be playing on it for the first time tonight and, and I'm glad that you guys are here to see it. On a typical day here on Cabrillo Boulevard, the scene looks much like this one. With traffic whizzing by, bikes and pedestrians are limited to the sidewalk and bike path. But what if we told you that one day a year, the street turns into a place where you can walk, bike, and even do yoga. See how it's possible in this next segment. Once a year, Santa Barbara hosts their annual event, Open Streets. This event originated from Ogata, Colombia, in hope to escape from the congestion of vehicles and participate in other forms of human development. Two miles of Cabrillo Boulevard transforms into a celebration of life and health. Unlike other street-oriented events where you're the observer, partaking in SB Open Streets makes you the event. SB Open Streets brings the community together to keep the streets alive by offering a family-friendly recreation zone where children and adults can participate in many fitness-engaging activities. Many children and adults take advantage of the free events SB Open Streets has to offer. Children participate in events such as skateboarding and rock climbing, while adults can enjoy a free back massage. Families are encouraged to engage in art, music, dance, and all other cultural activities that SB has to offer. Santa Barbara encourages you to get out and have some fun with Santa Barbara Open Streets. For more information about this event, please visit spopenstreets.org. And remember, Santa Barbara, stay active. Thanks for sharing this journey with us. Join us next time on South Coast Spotlight for another adventure on the American Riviera. If you have ideas for a future segment, email us at info at tvsb .tv. I'm Stephanie Taylor, and until next time, don't forget to put some culture in your day.